Hello and welcome to my new and improved podcast about all things weird, creepy and sometimes just unexplainable. My name is Shane Campbell and I used to run the show called Creepy and Weird Conspiracies. I have now given that show a facelift and it will be called Shh, Look Behind You. Without any more further ado, let's dive straight in. Today's show is going to be on an unsolved case that I came across a couple of years back and one that has always stuck with me. It's titled Tara Calico. Tara Lee Calico was born February 28, 1969, and she is an American woman who disappeared near her home in Belen, New Mexico on September 20, 1988. She is widely believed to have been kidnapped, and in July 1989, a famous Polaroid picture of an unidentified young woman as well as a boy who were gagged and seemingly bound, was televised to the public after it was found in a convenience store parking lot in Port St. Joe, Florida. On the morning of 20 September 1998, 19-year-old Tara Lee Calico headed out on her pink huffy bike for a ride along New Mexico State Road 47. There was nothing at all unusual about this plan. Tara, from Berlin, New Mexico, took the same route nearly every morning and sometimes she was accompanied by her mother, Patty Doll, and sometimes she just went alone. Patty had reportedly become anxious about the bike rides after she felt a motorist had been repeatedly following her. She had previously warned her teenage daughter to consider carrying mace with her. I mean, you know, just to be extra safe as well. Tara had a tennis date planned with her boyfriend at 12.30pm that very afternoon, and had stated her plans to come home to get ready. She had told Patty to come and find her if she hadn't returned by noon. That, that seems a little bit weird. I mean, it's almost like she had some sort of inclination that something might be going wrong. I mean, otherwise, why would you say that? Unless that's something that you do. Tara never came home. And when Patty headed out to find her daughter, there was no trace of Tara or her bike. And Tara was known to be a highly efficient, organized person. And this was very out of character. So I, I think, you know, something like this starts to happen, you immediately start thinking negative, especially with the mom had some sort of um, gut feeling that something might be going on and getting her daughter to carry mace with her. So, of course, you're going to start thinking the worst. And helped by well-meaning neighbors, police searched for signs of terror and came to the conclusion that she had just been abducted. So when something like this happens, um, immediately, you know, the family and friends uh, start to chat to the neighbors and local shop owners to see if anyone had seen anything. And some witnesses actually spoke of seeing Tara that morning. And a couple of people had noticed a lightly colored pickup truck that apparently had been following the teenager without her knowledge. Now, fragments of her shattered Boston cassette were found shattered by the side of the road. And pieces of her Sony Walkman was discovered 19 miles east of Highway 47, close to a remote campground. Patty reportedly believed Tara had deliberately dropped these pieces so she could be tracked. I mean, that's pretty smart in, you know, and that goes out to anyone that um, possibly finds himself in a situation where they could be abducted or kidnapped, that they sometimes like to leave clues behind so that those that are looking for them will know that A, they're still alive, and number two, it's like almost breadcrumbs as to where to find them. Now, like far too many missing person cases, the trail appeared to go cold, and a devastated Patty was left to wonder what had happened to her promising young daughter. However, one year after Tara's disappearance, a disturbing Polaroid emerge, emerged, which would shake up the entire investigation. The photograph in question was found in a Florida parking lot 1,600 miles away from where Tara vanished by a woman who had been out grocery shopping. It showed a young woman and a young boy their mouths covered with duct tape and their hands bound behind their backs. They appeared to be lying on a bed in the back of some sort of van. The young woman in the photo bore more than a striking resemblance to Tara. Patty herself believes she shared many of the same features as her daughter, including the same scar on her leg. The book beside the young woman, My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews, was known to be one of Tara's favorites as well. And actually looking at the photo it is pretty creepy and your mind starts to wonder what is going through her mind at that very point. Why is this creep or whoever it is taking a photo of me? 
But then the second thing is also, who's the boy in the photo? So Tara's mother consulted police and was convinced Tara was indeed the girl in the photo, taking into consideration factors of time, growth, and a lack of makeup. And according to Polaroid officials, the Polaroid had been taken off the May 1989 due to the availability of the particular type of film. And after analysis, Scotland Yard concluded Tara was the woman in the Polaroid. However, the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed. The FBI ruled the evidence was inconclusive. Uh, and, and, you know, that kind of just bugs me when different authorities start disagreeing about facts and that it almost takes into question how serious they are about it and, you know, are they going to overlook some evidence that possibly could be groundbreaking and, you know, help with the case. Now, the boy in the photograph was thought to be was thought to be some resemble to Michael Henley, a child who had gone missing in the previous April. And tragically, Michael's remains were later discovered in the Zuni Mountains and is believed he had died of exposure after wandering off. Tara's remains have never been found. And in 2013, a six-person task force was formed to reopen the investigation. And many of Tara's family members still hold out hope that she is still alive. According to People, law enforcement sources have said that Tara could have been taken by someone whom she knew. This possibility is reportedly endorsed by Chief Investigator Sergeant Joseph Rowland and former Valencia County Sheriff Rene Rivera. And in 2008, Rene Rivera, the Sheriff of Valencia County, reported that he received information that two teenagers had accidentally hit Calico with a truck, panicked and subsequently killed her. And according to Rivera, the boys who knew Calico drove up behind her in a truck and some form of an accident followed. And Calico later died, and those responsible covered up the crime. Rivera stated that he knew that the names of those involved, but that, without a body, he could not make a case. He did not release the evidence that led to him, which led him to this conclusion. And Calico's stepfather, John Doll, said the sheriff should not have made these comments if he was not willing to arrest anyone, and that a strong circumstantial evidence should be enough for a conviction. In October 2013, a six-person task force was established to reinvestigate Calico's disappearance. And as of 2017, no arrests have been made and the case remains open. And on October 1st, 2019, the FBI announced that they are offering a reward of up to 20,000 US dollars for precise details leading to the identification or location of Tara Lee Calico and any information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. Tara's high school friend Melinda Escobel is now hosting the true crime podcast called Vanished, the Tara Calico Investigation, and hopefully this disturbing mystery will one day be solved for Tara and her family's sake. So there you have it folks, that is the story of Tara Lee Calico and her mysterious disappearance. Um, it is 2021 and we still do not have any answers as to what happened to her or anybody that has been identified. And you know, most cases that um, involve missing people or murdered people, where there is no convicted person, most times you'll find that there's been poor policing that has been done. Um, whether it's down to witness investigation or following up on leads, or possibly even just looking at the evidence correctly. Um, yeah, I'd say it's rather disappointing, to say the least. However, it's not to say that all police um, and their police work that they do is poor. It's just in a lot of these cases, um, you feel like they've left a few stones un unturned. And uh, it's rather sad for the family and friends because they never have their closure. They can't move on in life. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Uh, what is your view? What do you think happened to her? Um, do you think that the witness reports about the the truck that was following her and then the boys that bumped her over, knocked her over. What did they do with the body? Um, yo, what is your views on it? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and comments. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that when new videos are released, you will be the first to be notified. If there are any other missing persons cases or paranormal stories that you have that you'd like me to cover, please let me know. And I'll definitely be getting onto them soon. Nonetheless, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and take care.